Today I am going to demonstrate these roses and grapes in acrylics. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Curie Fine Art. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now, let's paint some grapes. I started off by painting my canvas a solid color of burnt sienna, let it dry, then got the sketch out of the main areas, the upper section of the roses and the grapes, so I would know where I needed to airbrush. Then I airbrushed in most of my background just to get some of the shading and detail blocked in. I'm going to come back through now with a paintbrush and block this section in as well. I've got a lot of videos showing you how I do my bl blurry background, so I'm not going to focus too much on this video. I just kind of want to rush through it so we can move on to the grapes and the roses. I'm going to be doing a video very, very soon showing you guys how you can achieve a somewhat blurry background without an airbrush. It won't be quite the same, but I get so many requests for that 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 is coming soon. So here, moving on to these grapes. These grapes are slightly out of focus as well. So I'm blocking in the main color and then I'm taking a stiff brush and just doing a few brush strokes around the edge. You don't want to overdo that when you're just trying to fuzz up the edges like that. Just a couple of brush strokes is all you need to soften that look. Going to go ahead and block in the rest of these. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're blending like that is that they try to over blend. You don't need very many brush strokes to soften out your edges. So for this section, I'm just going to roughly block everything in. This is very messy, very ugly. I am not worried about details or color being perfect. I just want to know approximately where my grapes go and that is it. It really is very, very simple. Then after that dries, I'm going to go onto the next layer of grapes where I start to focus a little bit more on getting some of my shadows and highlights in here. And again, I'm not super worried about my color. I'm worried about my contrast. That is the, th the main thing that you wanna focus on. Make sure that you're getting your lights light enough and your darks dark enough. Coming back through here on these grapes, just doing the exact same thing. I apply the shadow and then I take a stiff brush and just kind of smudge that out, just a couple of brush strokes to soften it. Don't want to overblend those. If you overblend, you end up pushing all of the paint out to kind of a, creating a ring, which is the opposite of the blending that you're trying to do there. So just remember, a couple of brush strokes is all you need. Now I'm coming through with some transparent mixing white. Took me a minute to remember the name there, but this is the transparent mixing white. This is the one time I'm switching over to the Liquitex heavy body. And this is going to be a very, very translucent white. You can see it has a bit of a bluish tint to it. I'm adding some of the, this isn't really highlights. I don't think that's the right word. Just the skin on some of these grapes here. And I'm just going to repeat the process, building and building until I get them to look how I want. I end up coming through with a bit of red oxide, which works so great when you're painting this type of, or this color of grapes. I did some highlights with that. The red oxide in the Liquitex Basics, it's a very opaque color, and you can add that. It ends up making it look like a glow is coming through the grapes. I love that color right now for painting grapes. Just smudging some of this out. Again, don't over blend it. And don't feel like every brush stroke that you create needs to be blended. There's that red oxide. Sometimes when you make a brush stroke, you don't need to blend it. Don't blend everything. If it doesn't need it, leave it alone. Adding some shadows in here. And with some of these shadows, I am using ivory black instead of Mars black. If I want my black to be very opaque, I'm going to use Mars black. If I want a very translucent black, that's why I'm going to switch over to my ivory black. Now I'm coming on top with titanium white, which, which is a very opaque white, to create the highlights, brighten these up even more. And the fun thing with grapes, if you have a bad layer, paint over it. It just adds to the d depth and dimension in those grapes. Just keep layering until they look how you want them to. Adding a few water droplets on there, and I do have a video showing you exactly how to make those. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the rest of these grapes. We're going to move through these a bit quicker. Seeing that it's exactly like the ones we just did. Just lots of shadows and highlights, slowly building up. And as you're building up, it's going to look ugly. Don't let that scare you. It doesn't really start to look good until you put the highlighted areas for the skin of the grapes on, but you can't get the highlights. The highlights don't look right if you don't have the darks and the shadows underneath first. So we'll go through here. I'm going to start on the stem of the grapes. I'm using a liner brush for this. 
adding some shadows in here again going back to the ivory black for my shadows I don't want to use Mars black because I've got such dark black underneath portions of this if I switch to a very opaque black I'm just gonna it will basically look like I thinned out the stem which is not what I want so by using the Mars black that's just darkening up some of the areas to create that shadow I'm using unbleached titanium white for the majority of my highlights I will only use titanium white for the brightest brightest highlights but most of this is being done with my unbleached titanium white. And if you are having a hard time getting fine detail with a liner brush, I have a video explaining how to use that and I will have a card pop up for that one as well. Make sure to check that video out. Lots of little details, but there's no magic trick. Like you don't need a magic pen or something different to create details. You just need the liner brush. You need to learn how to control it well. I spent years trying to find some great tool to get fine detail with and really all it was was the liner brush. I just needed to learn to use it. So I will try to save you guys that time and just give you that pro tip there. Just learn to use that brush. So coming back through again, adding highlights to finish these up. Notice some of my grapes have a lot more yellow in them and some are very, very purple. That variation helps to make them look more realistic versus having them all the same color. So going on to my rose, I'm going to block everything in. This is with the unbleached titanium white first, adding some shadows. I am using raw umber for quite a few of these shadows. And I'm also using Naples yellow in with this and I'm making the rose very dark to start with that way if if I go too light now my highlights aren't going to stand out enough so I've got to go pretty dark to begin with and as I paint this a lot of my colors start to look muddy and terrible it's okay just keep layering until you get it to look how you want don't feel like oh my gosh I just messed that up just more layers blocking in all of my details in here and I don't really care if each petal is exactly right if it's a little bit different than the reference photo not a big deal And this is usually easier if you're new to painting roses, I would say start one or two petals at a time. This two petals is okay because they're very small, but normally don't do more than that to get started because it can get very overwhelming. To soften out some of the shadows that I already have, I took my transparent mixing white with a bit of my magenta colors and some of the reddish brown colors just to create a tint. And I glazed that over my shadows and my highlights, everything I had done so far on that rose. I glazed over all of that, let it dry, and then came back on top with my highlights. By glazing this transparent mixing white, this very pale sort of peach color over everything, I smoothed out my shadows. It looks like I did this amazing soft blending, but I didn't. It, but having that glaze over it, it just softened everything up really, really nicely. And I will come back through with a liner brush and better define the edges of some of those, those flowers, but because it did soften that out as well. But look at how nice those shadows look within each petal that I had previously done on the right hand side of the rose compared to what's on there now. This is very choppy looking, very rough. Once I come through with this section, this kind of bottom corner here, when I come through with that transparent mixing white and peach type color and glaze over everything, it's going to pull it all together and soften everything out just like the other side of the rose. And I'll, like I said, I'll come back through and do a little bit of detailing with that liner after. Making sure to get everything nice and dark. If I do not have my darks light enough, or I'm sorry, dark enough, then the lights won't show up. There's that glaze with that peach color I was talking about. And if you're going to glaze white, it has to be the transparent mixing white. If you glaze your titanium white, it's just too opaque and you make everything look very foggy, which is definitely not what you want here. So I'm going to leave that rose alone for now and I'm going to do the same thing that I did on that one to these last three, making sure that I've got my darks dark enough. Now one thing that I did in this one, I was using a lot of blue for some of the shadows and I ended up really not liking how that looked. So I came back through after I, I was done recording, but all of the shadows that I had glazed that you'll see in just a second with the blue, I came back over with brown and it looked so much better. But you can see here, that's just muddy and it's looking terrible. I don't have to freak out. I didn't ruin anything I'm just going to go over it with colors that I like better so here I'm pulling more of that orange in there I love orange up against the purple colors or violet colors of the grapes those are two colors that I will always use together if I paint purples and violets I will almost always use oranges uh, along with that even if the reference photo doesn't call for it I just love those together so coming through with the highlights last little details 
And that is it for that this one. And as you can see on the final photo, the roses, I came back through with the brown over the shaded portions and it looked so much better. But yeah, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. And I do have a video showing you a little bit slower how to glaze grapes. I will have a card pop up so you can check that out. Thanks for watching and get into your supporters over on Patreon. The longer version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover. So make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I had Starbucks and it's gone and it makes me really sad. Fun fact, I get so many comments from people complaining about how fast I talk. Like it's just a regular thing that is ridiculous to me. I don't know that this seems like normal speed to me, but people always accuse me of drinking too much coffee. I don't actually drink coffee. It is super, super rare that I have anything stronger than a cup of green tea. I'm hyperthyroid and my adrenal glands are always like super powered. So I don't do well with much caffeine. So yeah, this speed has nothing to do with caffeine and this one hasn't quite kicked in yet. So yeah, this is just normal. I don't know about you, but doesn't that seem really weird to have someone complain about how fast you talk? Like it seems so rude. That's not something that's within my control at all, except for today because I had coffee, but I don't normally. So when someone's complaining about how fast I'm talking, it's like, that's just, you may as well complain about my height. I also happen to be short. Do you want to pick on me for that too? Because I can't control, actually I could control that because I can wear platforms or wedges. So complaining about how fast somebody talks, it's very inconsiderate. This is the girl who just had Starbucks. But seriously, I really mourn this because I'm not going to have another one for so long. To continue on my reign of caffeine terror tonight, I have my leftover iced tea from Chipotle. I have leftover Chipotle in the fridge. Yeah, this video's over.